Well, hey there guys and welcome to another video. So this video is going to be shot a little bit outdoors and a little bit indoors. Right guys, now before we start talking about the differences between mainland China and Hong Kong, let's first of all get a couple of things out the way. Number one, I think I'm fairly qualified to talk about this subject because first of all I was married to a Hong Kong girl and divorced. Uh, I've been living here in mainland China, in Shenzhen, for uh, just almost 10 years now, I'm like a month or two shy of 10 years. And living here on the border of Hong Kong, I've crossed over many times. And like I said, having been married to a Hong Kong girl, I've been to Hong Kong a lot. I've got friends living in Hong Kong. I know how it works very well there. And I also know how mainland China works very well, as most of you know from watching my videos. Of course, I've been all over mainland China. I'm not just uh, stuck in a little bubble here in the south in Shenzhen. So I know pretty much everything the mainland has to offer and I know pretty much what Hong Kong has to offer. So that's the first thing I wanted to get out of the way. Okay, second thing I really, really want to get out of the way is that this video is not about politics. I know that it's a very big uh, sort of, what, what would you say, it's a, it's a point of contention and there are lots of people who are very upset about the whole Hong Kong China thing. People in Hong Kong have very strong opinions, people in mainland have very strong opinions people from the outside world have very strong opinions. That's not what this video is about. Um, this video is purely about if you as a foreigner want to come and live in Asia or in China and you are torn between choosing Hong Kong or mainland China, this is the kind of video that could help you. But it's not only for those kind of people, it's also for people to maybe understand better how it all works because it is quite confusing and uh, for people who don't live here and people who are unaware of the the political situation and the situation here in China they might be quite confused and they might not realize that how different Hong Kong is to mainland China and vice versa. What I'm going to talk about first is the obvious. Hong Kong and China although it is one country, two systems, that's what they call it anyway, uh, you know Hong Kong used to be a British colony and it was handed back to China in 1997. For all intents and purposes, Hong Kong is a different country to mainland China. Now, the reason I say this is you actually have to pass over a border and you have to go through two sets of customs in order to actually get into Hong Kong. You need to produce your passport, you need to have a different kind of a visa to get into mainland China, and you need to have a visa or, you know, if you're from a visa-exempt country, you know, different rules apply when you go into Hong Kong. So. You know, you can't come to China and expect to just walk into Hong Kong. It doesn't work that way. It is still a different country as far as like practicality is concerned. Let's talk about cost of living. All right, let me give you an example. I'm sitting here at a restaurant outside. I can have a couple of beers and have a meal and it will probably cost me anywhere between 30, uh, 40, maybe 50 RMB max. If I were to have a similar meal in Hong Kong, it would cost me about 120 to 150 Hong Kong dollars. Basically, food and drink is a lot more expensive in Hong Kong. Of course, there's a reason for this. Um, you know, Hong Kong being an international city and so on, uh, there are certain standards. So, you know, this beer that I'm drinking now, well, it's very possibly fake. Yeah, it doesn't taste all that great. It's very possibly fake. Who knows? The food quality here as well, you never know what you're getting. Of course, food here on the main, mainland is amazing. It tastes great. You can find so many different things to eat, so many awesome things to eat. But you never really know if the quality of the food you're eating is good or not. And on many, many occasions, I've eaten stuff which is dodgy or, you know, I, I know it's not well prepared or it's dirty or I've, I've drank fake beer on numerous occasions. So, you know, you take that risk. So it's a bit of a balance. In Hong Kong, it's a lot more expensive to go out and eat, but over here, you take the risk of having something that's maybe tainted or poor quality. The money is different. Uh, here I have a 20 Hong Kong dollar note. Let's see if I can get a focus on that for you. Okay. Now, you get different kinds of uh, 
notes actually, which is kind of interesting. This is a standard chartered bank note. And then over here we have an HSBC 20 Hong Kong dollar note. As you can see, they are different, but they actually have the same value, etc. All right, here I have a 10 Hong Kong dollar note. Give me a second. I quite like this one because it has this little see-through thing over here. It's quite interesting. And it's made out of plastic, kind of like Australian money. Okay, back. All right, uh, mainland Chinese money is the RMB, not the Hong Kong dollar. Here we have 100. They all look the same. You know, you don't get different variants of the RMB. I've got a whole video about money. If you guys are interested in looking at Chinese money, there's a video. Um, I'll put a link down below. Okay. Right, so money is different. So also, it's something to bear in mind if you're going to go to Hong Kong or if you're going to go to mainland China, remember to change your money. Being an ex-British colony, of course, when you drive in Hong Kong, you drive on the left-hand side of the road, which is opposite to here in China. So, you know, China, like America, you drive on the right-hand side of the road. But just like South Africa, Australia, and other British colonies, in Hong Kong, you drive on the left. So, you know, steering wheels on the other side in the car can be a little bit confusing for some people. Let's talk about language. Now, first of all, in Hong Kong, people speak Cantonese. Here in mainland China, people speak Mandarin. There are parts of Guangdong where people speak Cantonese as well, but, you know, Hong Kong has its own sort of special variant of Cantonese. On top of that, here we use simplified characters. In Hong Kong, traditional characters, just like Taiwan. You'll also notice that all the signs are bilingual, both in Chinese and English, which is great for a foreigner because you can read everything. Another thing that's really useful for foreigners is most people can speak English in Hong Kong. Uh, if you go into a 7-Eleven or any shop, the shop assistant will usually be able to speak at least a, a, a marginally good level of English. Uh, in fact, I've been embarrassed a couple of times going into Hong Kong and I try to speak to them in Mandarin because, of course, I can't speak Cantonese. And I'll go up to a 7-Eleven, a shop attendant or something, and I'll ask them in Chinese, like, how much is this? And they'll reply, oh, that will be $12, sir. <laughs> so, you know, they can understand Mandarin to, uh, to a degree, but because of the whole, you know, sort of situation that goes on on this side of the world anyway, they prefer to speak uh, Cantonese or English in Hong Kong. Let's talk about food for a moment here. Now, Hong Kong is an international city. It's a travel hub. And because it's also an ex-British colony, it has all the international brands. It has an amazing selection of international foods. You can find any kind of food that you want there, be it British food, American food, Indian food, Mexican food, you know, all the kind of food that we are accustomed to in the West. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that if you went to New York or you went to Hong Kong, you'd probably find pretty much the same kind of choice as far as food is concerned. Now, you have to bear in mind that in mainland China, although there's a massive selection of Chinese food and so many different interesting, awesome foods to eat and try, mainland China does Western food poorly. It's really, really, really difficult to find any kind of good Western food over here. So that's something you should take into consideration. If you like cheese and you like Western food, things like that, you know, Hong Kong's definitely the place. Next thing I'm going to talk about is a bit of a point of contention for me, and that is internet uh, and internet freedom. Uh, here in mainland China, everybody knows the internet is filtered. It goes through the Golden Shield Project, it's called. That's the official name. You know, everybody calls it the Great Firewall of China. But basically, all the major Western websites are blocked. Things like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Blogger, WordPress, any kind of big influential uh, website. Google, in fact, all Google is blocked. You can't even just you can't even do a Google search here. Um, there are ways around this with VPNs and so on and so forth. That's that's how I get my videos online. But of course, it's a pain in the ass. It's slow. It's unreliable. But in Hong Kong, of course, you've got high-speed internet. It's completely unfiltered and uh, completely open. So uh, that's another thing to take into consideration. If you go to Hong Kong, I, I actually quite like that. I pop over the border. If I have my phone, suddenly all my Google apps update. I can use all, my, all the functions of my phone correctly. But as soon as I'm over here, it's just all a complete mess and a real pain in the ass. So, you know, that's just one of the, the things you trade off living in the mainland. But... I'm going to now give you my own personal feelings on living in Hong Kong and living here and why I personally choose to live in the mainland instead of in Hong Kong. 
Why do I choose to live in mainland China instead of Hong Kong? Because, you know, the option was there for me. I was married to a Hong Kong uh, resident. I could have actually, you know, gotten citizenship and all that. Because like an international uh, country, that is an option. Whereas mainland China, for a foreigner to get a green card, is a practical impossibility. Uh, although it's theoretically possible, it's actually not. Anyway, why did I choose to, to live here instead of Hong Kong? Well, Hong Kong is an amazing, beautiful city with so many different things to do and so many options and all the international bands play there and you know, it's all, it's like, it's like living overseas and that's basically why. Mainland China is a lot more of an adventure. It's very different to the Western world. Things work completely differently here. So if you're out there to, to have an adventure and uh, to see new things and to experience completely different things, mainland China is definitely a better bet. Although you must be prepared to be thrown completely out of your comfort zone because, you know, that's what China's all about. So that's reason number one. <clears throat> reason number two, the cost of living. It's really, really, really high. Uh, if you want to live the same sort of lifestyle that you live in mainland China, you need to have at least 30 or 40,000 Hong Kong dollars a month salary. Whereas somebody earning 8,000 or 10,000 RMB uh, here in mainland China can live the same, you know, sort of quality of life. And by that I mean purchasing goods, saving money, paying rent, you know, enjoying yourself, going out and drinking. So cost of living is just so much higher in Hong Kong. It's a very, very expensive place. And I'd hazard to say it's one of the most expensive places in the world. Of course, there's a lot of money going around Hong Kong. Most Hong Kong residents are fairly well off. But, you know, it's, it's a big pressure. And, uh, you know, when you come and live here in the mainland, without that massive financial pressure, you can actually really relax. So it's a much more relaxed lifestyle here in mainland China. Next reason is population density. Now, everybody knows that China's got a massive population, right? But it's not that apparent, actually, when you live here. There are lots of people everywhere, and compared to your hometown or your home country, you're, be, you're going to be blown away. You're going to be like, what's going on? There are just people everywhere. You know, there's not a single time of day that you don't see people. Go, out, go outside now at like 3 a.m. in the morning, there'll be people. But Hong Kong, because it's so small, has a massively high population density. So, you know, when you're walking out on the street, it's always crowds, there's always queues, it's always really difficult to, to go anywhere. If you want to go to a restaurant at dinner time or lunch time, there will always be a waiting, like a waiting list. There'll be people sitting on chairs outside waiting to get into the restaurant. Here in mainland China, not so much. Even though there's a high population density, it's not the same. You can go to a restaurant at dinner time, there'll always be a table. There won't always be this sort of shoulder to shoulder crowding everywhere. So that's something to take into consideration. Right guys, I, I hope this video has helped you make up your mind as to where you want to go. If you want a big adventure, come to the mainland. If you want to have a really interesting, still an adventure, but a really interesting, good quality of life, Hong Kong's also a really good bet. It's entirely up to you. If you have questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll get back to you. And I will be making a video on how to actually cross the border into Hong Kong in depth in the future. So uh, if that's what you were looking for, it's coming. That's it really guys. Until next time, stay awesome.